Hello, I'm Tyus, and this is Tyus Looks At, and we're on to the breach once more of the colossally stupid, and for the final time as well. And that's a question on Patreon, then, depending on how certain videos go up, this actually might be the penultimate video, who knows? As we look at the final episode of The Mummy, the animated series. We pick up the episode a while after we left off, with our heroes in France on the last steps before finding the scrolls of Thebes. Talk to me, Evie. It's getting brighter. But apparently they're playing magical item hot or cold. That way. When this reading is combined with our reading from the Art of Triomphe, it indicates the scroll should be found in the Paris Opera House. You know, doesn't it seem weird that the magical MacGuffin last time was able to direct them to France through showing them the Eiffel Tower, a building that for all intents and purposes shouldn't have now existed, instead of showing them the building they actually need to go to, which it also wouldn't know existed, but to me that just seems like poor but extremely convenient writing. Though, since the building doesn't matter anyway, let's just get more stupid out of the way. At the base of the Eiffel Tower, Imhotep attacks an organ grinder, who's there for some reason in the middle of the night when the streets are completely deserted because once again convenience and uses the monkey to attack our heroes. Imhotep has fantastic shape-shifting powers and can raise the dead and yet for this he uses a single monkey. I'm beginning to think that his powers weren't the only things taken from him in the beginning episode. During the fight Imhotep uses Gust and apparently it's super effective as it's able to push Eevee through a set of metal bars. Get this monkey off my back! And that may be the singularly worst use of that joke I've ever heard. Eevee is forced to drop the puzzle, which Alex is able to save through the power of his MacGuffin, which is also then able to bring the metal bars to life and make them wrap around the villains. Because screw having any of our heroes do anything to stop the bad guys, let's just have them stand around like statues, because that's far more exciting. Our heroes go investigating, but realise the scrolls are not in the opera house, but actually in the catacombs beneath it. And now here we see the show trying to be educational. Nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live here. The catacombs were constructed in the 14th century. Kevin Spacey, if you would. Wrong! Yes, the first sewer system of France was built in the 14th century, whereas the catacombs, which are entirely different, would have been at best the late 18th century. But you know, what's 300 years between historians? Over 400 miles of tunnels on multiple levels. Each one more charming than the next, no doubt. Well, actually, it's around 300 kilometers, which would be about 200 miles. But no, 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 go on. What were they used for? No one is certain. Okay, no, show. Whoever claimed you were educational is a fucking liar at the highest priority. Let's just get that out of the way. Everyone knew what the French catacombs were for. And you want to know why they knew what the French catacombs were for? It's because they were built for one purpose. To house the mass graves of various Parisian cemeteries that were literally overflowing. And even though you try to cover your asses with this line... Perhaps safe passage between city buildings. <gasps> and occasionally as mass graves. This is the epitome of why I hate this show. They don't try, they don't fact check, they don't care to get things right. Not even a little. Even when it's basic information that could actually be useful to the audience and is likely being taught in schools. Just on so many levels show. Go fuck yourself. Back at the Opera House, Imhotep does this for some reason. Seriously, I have no idea. We know he's following them anyway, why show it? while our so-called heroes come across something even more dangerous. Uh, what's that? A minotaur. It's half man, half bull. Yeah, no. No, it's not. It looks more like the Hulk had a drunk one-night stand with a cow. I thought minotaurs were fictional. Evie, you just fought a mummy multiple times, seen the dead be brought back to life, learnt you with a reincarnation of an Egyptian princess, and battled a fair few other monsters on your journey. A minotaur should not seem out of the question. 
I'm laying this one at your feet, writers, because that line should never have been uttered. The... I'm not calling it a Minotaur, because if that's a Minotaur, I'm Chris Pratt. Monster saves Evie from falling and kidnaps her, forcing the others into action to rescue her. Dad, no! And people think I'm impulsive. Yes, because God forbid they don't rely on the manacle to do something for them for once. So how did they get across the chasm? They rely on the manacle. Seriously, I'm starting to think our heroes have done like 10% of the work in these episodes, and in the other 90 has been the manacle itself. Evie tries to threaten the monster, and is then surprised it can speak. I'm warning you, we've taken down creatures that make you look like a sock puppet! Quiet! <gasps> you can talk? Then why the hell were you speaking to it, Evie, if you didn't expect some kind of response, either physically or verbally? Also, why is this still surprising to you? Seriously, this is like a Tuesday for you guys. The others split up with Rick and Jonathan going after Evie, whilst Alex and Ardis go for the scrolls. I think the scrolls may be behind this wall. I have just the thing to find that out. Oh yeah, just go throwing TNT around in a tight and possibly unstable environment. It's not like there could be water above you that might flood in later. Wait a minute. Ardith and Alex find the scrolls as Evie learns more of the Minotaur, and Imhotep makes his way to the catacombs. Weird how they're all dressed up like they're ancient Egyptians, despite the fact that all the corpses around here are French. But then again, that could just be lazy animation and them using the same character models over and over again. Jonathan and Rick get attacked by the skeletons, though how is confusing given to get to where they are, the skeletons would need to have carefully stepped over the stones and then also know exactly where they were. Let's just call it more contrivances, and leave it at that. Alex finally gets the manacle removed from his wrist, Yay! and then immediately puts it back on to save Ardith Bay. <gasps> we also get the Minotaur explaining his backstory, which is about as generic as you can expect. But it was then I realized not even a Magi could defend the scrolls. I call upon the powers of Osiris to transform you! I needed to be transformed into the most powerful of beasts. A Minotaur. Whilst Evie gets attacked by Imhotep before being rescued by Alex. Your mastery of the manacle is impressive. He threw a rock at you, it's not really that impressive. Unless, of course, Imhotep is a fan of the last Airbender movie. Though, given the fact that the same thing takes down the supposedly powerful Minotaur, I guess then maybe it is. Imhotep gets the scroll, but Alex torches it instead of hitting Imhotep or knocking it from his hands. Now I have no reason to keep you alive. You had a reason to keep him alive before now? Given the number of attempts you've made on his life, I find that hard to believe. All the fighting makes the walls crumble and water pour in, resulting in a rather anticlimactic moment. Yeah, that wasn't really that shocking show. Does kind of make me wonder now why they were fleeing from it. With the scrolls gone, Ardeth tells Alex that they instead will teach him to control the manacle by training him to become a Magi. But why a Magi? Because we're losing viewers and we need something to book the ratings. But what if we don't? Then some English guy on YouTube will make continuous fun of us. Of course, meaning that we are entirely right back to where we started at the beginning of the series. We hope you've enjoyed No Moral Theatre, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thus ending the episode. So what did I think? My god, does this show still suck. The weak writing and jokes, the characters who repeatedly say either redundant or out of character lines, the boring ass plot that's the same as every other boring ass plot that this show has put forth. The fact that we are literally back where we started at the beginning of the series, not even attempting to do the he's removed the manacle but is forced to put it back on in the second season idea, and instead having him only remove it for about two minutes. The continuing over reliance on the manacle to write them out of every situation. But it should be the actions of the heroes that do it, not this spray and pray magic bullcrap. And any idea of it being educational was also thrown out the window 
by the fact they get basic facts wrong and either assume or seem to make up information that's then given as facts. And factual accuracy was kind of a big thing in the movies because it actually gave an air of legitimacy to all of the supernatural stuff surrounding it. It's kind of important. Additionally, how can you even call this a finale? When, other than them actually finding the scroll, this entire plot could have been placed anywhere in the series and it would have made no difference. Hell, change the name of what they find and it would literally be exactly the same. I do have an idea of what I feel they could have done. Why don't I have Alex remove the manacle at the beginning of the episode, Imhotep gets it and they have to stop him, ending it by having Alex reluctantly putting the manacle back on to stop him. It'd be a damn sight more interesting and actually mean our heroes do something instead of sitting around with their thumbs up their asses waiting for the manacle to save them. I get that some people like this show, but to me, it is awful. It's just a piss poor attempt to capitalize on a franchise with no real goal or story in mind. They just trot out the most generic of ideas with no attempt at subtlety or intelligence, and then try to right this ship when it suddenly becomes apparent that it's quickly sinking. So I'm quite glad that there is no reason or way I could possibly talk about this show again. I mean, it's not like some DVD came out this year with it all collected on and it being in region 2 making it even more easy for me to get my hands on. And there's also no possible way that anyone, using money of some form, could force me to have to look at more episodes of this shit. None whatsoever. So I've been Tyus, this has been Tyus Looks At, and I am done.